about to. That is the expression we're discussing today. You probably know the meaning, but you might not be using it. I know many advanced speakers don't use this term and it's very useful. I am about to climb a mountain. <laughs> Actually, I'm about to walk up a hill. Let's be honest. I'm also about to drink my Starbucks chai latte and I'm about to do some writing. Hello there, it is Nicole Teacher, and today you are about to learn something new. Maybe you know the meaning. Maybe you understand what that means. However, do you know that it can imply two different meanings when you use it in past tense? When you say, I was about to, or they were about to, that could mean they did or they didn't. And there is a way to understand what is implied. Now, there are a couple other expressions that I would love to share with you that have a similar meaning. So pay attention now because you are about to become a little better at speaking English comfortably and fluently. So the first thing we should do is just quickly review the meaning of about to. When you say the be verb that you are about to do something or she is about to do something, that means it is going to happen. It is going to occur very, very soon. So if you say I'm about to graduate, that means probably in a few weeks, maybe days, but you could use it for months. It is all relative to the subject that you are referring to. If you say she's about to cry, well, you can see her face, you can see the tears building up, you can just read her facial expressions, maybe hear in her voice that she's about to cry. There can be almost any situation when something is about to happen. It's going to be very, very soon. I could be walking here and, and running and then I can say, oh my God, I'm about to pass out. And then you drink some water and you slow down or you stop and then you don't pass out. This is when it happens and you're like right here. The event is about to start. Maybe it starts at 5 p.m. and right now it is 4.15 p.m. So it's about to start. We don't know the exact time, but you can feel that it's very, very close. Another expression that of course has a similar meaning is going to. I'm going to pass out. The event is going to start. You can use that, but about to has that feeling like right here. It just has that feeling. So if somebody calls you and they say, what are you doing? You will say, I'm about to walk out my door if you want to sound like a native English speaker, you should start using that term more often. I don't hear many English learners or even like fluent English speakers who were not native speakers. I don't hear them use the expression very often. And I don't know why. I think it's because we have something called universal grammar in our brains. Some people believe that. And it's about how your brains are programmed. So maybe some expressions in another language are comfortable to pick up and feel natural while some don't if you haven't developed that habit your entire life. I don't hear my clients say it. I don't hear my students say it. I have a membership program now that you can join and you can read the information below if you would like to join my membership program and to have study materials so that you can just get more comfortable with English and enjoy the learning experience more. If you don't want to read the information below, then you can just go to www.nicoleteacher.com. So we've reviewed what the meaning is and we have reviewed that you should start to intentionally use this expression more often. I'm sure you can just practice, try to use it once a day. <laughs> 
Now let's go over a couple synonyms. So that's the third point I wanted to make is that there are other expressions. I like to say about to in every situation, unless it's something pretty strong and profound, then I might say on the verge of. Do, do, do. To me, that sounds pretty strong. And we can say something like, she was on the verge of tears. She was about to cry. I can, I can imagine it. I can picture, oh, she was upset. But she was on the verge of tears. It's like there's some edge and she's right there. And the word verge just kind of sounds uh, dramatic. So that's when I would use that expression. I would never say, I'm on the verge of walking out my door. No, I'm about to walk out my door. Okay, the event is on the verge of starting. No, you wouldn't say that. On the verge of something big, like something big. We are on the verge of a discovery. You can also use the expression on the brink of. So we are on the brink of a discovery. They are on the brink of curing cancer. Something pretty strong like that. Right now it is coronavirus, so a lot of companies are on the verge of closing down. So if you say the companies are about to close down, I actually feel that it's pretty short. McDonald's is about to go out of business. I feel like it's pretty much decided, like this is a fact that it's, it's going to happen. It's very, very likely. That's the thing about this expression is it means it's likely to happen. Not that it definitely will, but that it's very likely to happen. And if I say McDonald's is about to go out of business, which is not likely, then I feel like, oh my God, this is happening. But if I say that McDonald's is on the verge of going out of business, I can just feel it's a very strong situation or problem that is threatening, that is possible. It's really the same meaning, but there's a different connotation, a different feeling and native speakers can understand that like, oh my God, divorce, let's say that. They are on the verge of divorce. Oh my God, they're fighting really bad or they're just having serious problems and it could happen. Now I want to move on to number four. That is all set to something. That means we are ready to do something. So if I say I'm all set for my trip, that's not the same meaning as I'm about to go on my trip. These are not exactly synonyms because they don't have the same meaning. But I thought I should mention it in this video because they are useful expressions to use when you are about to do something. So when you are ready, when you want to express that you are ready for something, then you can say, I'm all set. I'm all set to do something. You've probably heard people say that before, but again, I have not heard many English learners using this expression. So somebody might say, are you ready? And you'll hear a native English speaker say, all set, or I'm all set. That means I'm ready. I have everything I need. I am prepared. I am packed for my trip. Like I'm all set for my trip. They have their tickets. They have booked their hotel and their flights. They have made all their plans and mapped out what they're going to do. So there is a total difference in the meaning, but they are often used in the same situation. And now we're going to wrap up today's video with number five. This is the most useful part of the video, in my opinion. And that is because I want to teach you something that is implied very often. It's not always the case, but very often when you hear this expression used in the past tense, it might mean that it didn't happen. It kind of implies, but something happened. Now, this is not always the case. Please don't think that, okay? It's not the rule. It definitely doesn't mean that every time. Okay, this is just explaining the time. That's it. It's just saying that it was in the past and something was about to happen. Now, did that thing happen? 
you have to figure that out by the rest of the story. You have to listen because usually other things they say can kind of explain if it happened or not. However, if you're speaking to a native English speaker, they feel that they already told you if it happened or not because it was implied. You might say, uh, I was about to walk out my door when my mom called. Now maybe I still walked out my door later, but I can kind of feel that I didn't walk out the door at that minute. I was about to jump in the ocean when the lifeguard blew his whistle. And so I can guess that you didn't jump in the ocean. So maybe they were closing the beach or there was a shark. Something happened and it prevented the occurrence. There are many situations I could explain where it still happened. Okay. Um, I was about to have dinner and they told me it was free. Okay. That's a strange situation, but yeah, of course I'm still going to have dinner, but I'm just telling you the time that something happened right as I was about to eat. They told me it was free. Did this ever happen? Why am I making a story? Let's say you're listening to the story and somebody says, Oh my God, he was being so mean. She was about to cry. That's it. Finished. You didn't hear any more information. I know 100% she did not cry. And you might say, Nicole teacher, how did you know? <laughs> Are you psychic? No, because I'm a native English speaker. And I know that in that situation, I can kind of feel that if she had cried, they would mention he was being so mean, she cried. They would tell me it happened. Now, this is a confusion that I hear sometimes with English learners. They think that almost means the same as about to, and it does not. I wanna think of a few more examples here. Let's say uh, I was about to start filming. This actually happened today. <laughs> I was about to start filming and somebody came walking up the trail. Now, what do you think happened? What do you think happened? In this situation, you know that I still did end up filming later. It didn't happen at that moment. I was about to start filming. I was right here, filming here. Now let's use the example of buying shoes. This might clear things up for you. And I suggest you take some notes because this really separates the nuances of using the term about to. First situation, you call me up and you say, Nicole teacher, what are you doing? And I say, I'm about to buy some shoes. That means I have shoes in my hand, I'm going to the cashier, and I probably have my credit card ready to purchase the shoes. I'm going to do that. It is so likely that I'm going to buy these shoes right now. But if you call me and you say, what are you doing? And I say, I was about to buy some shoes. That means, but my phone rang. So now I have paused or I've delayed or who knows? Like maybe I will buy them in a few minutes when I get off the phone. Or maybe I think you have an emergency and you need something. So maybe I can't buy the shoes because I have to go help you. But it's really not that much of a difference. It just means kind of the same thing. Like I was about to do that or I am about to do that. Very slight difference in nuance. And then you get up to the cashier and they say, all set. That means like, are you ready to purchase this? Uh, you have everything you need. And I say, yep, all set. Again, remember that it means I, I'm ready. I'm ready to make my purchase. And I just want to add on one little bonus nuance. This you can kind of pick up naturally, but I just want to share this example with you. Native English speakers often use this expression when they have a feeling like a strong feeling of passion, uh, maybe excitement or anger. And they say they were about to do something, but they don't really mean it. Like that was not really their intention but maybe just a feeling. So you can say, I was so excited. I, I found the perfect shoes. I was about to buy 20 pairs. Okay, so I know that I wasn't really going to buy 20 pairs, but 
And it's like, I want to, that would be awesome. Okay, so I feel like you are all set with today's video and I'm about to go home. So if you ever feel confused when you hear this expression, then that means that you should maybe just try to ask more questions. But when you're using the expression, this is not one of those expressions that really causes many problems, okay? It, you, it might be used the wrong way and the person, the listener, will have to ask you some more questions, but you're not really going to offend anybody with this expression, so please start using it more often. And if you're using it, I would like for you to be clear whether something happened or it didn't by saying, I was about to buy the shoes, but blah, blah, blah. Whenever that but is there, together with the was, you can feel it didn't happen, okay? I was hungry, but it, something happened. I didn't eat or I couldn't eat or something like that. I was about to yell, but I didn't yell. Remember that combination, was, mm, but. So remember, check out my membership program below so that you can start experiencing English more often. I'm so happy to have you with us. Thank you for subscribing and tell your friends and your colleagues to subscribe as well. I want to help as many people as possible and I can't wait to see you next time. Mwah!